Thanks for coming down and, and having a look um, at my little orchard. This is Harrowwood Farm Caravan Park and, and cider. And, uh, and I make Harrowwood Farm cider and Dickie's Dribble, my, uh, my famous Dickie's Dribble. Uh, here we are in the orchard uh, that I started about six years ago. We're, we're in front of a little dabinet tree here. Makes a very good single variety cider, but also makes a very good mixing uh, cider. I've got about a thousand trees planted here. It's good to plant trees. It's a good organic thing to get into. You're doing your bit for the environment. You're doing your bit for the bees. You're, you're, you're producing oxygen and you've got a product. Wonderful. So uh, thanks for coming down and we'll, we'll go down and we'll have a look at uh, the part that the shifters play. Right, so having come from the orchard, this is where we actually do our processing. Uh, we store all of our apples in a big clamp around the corner, a uh, big concrete clamp, and we, we load this old potato hopper um, that I managed to purchase for £500. Had to re-motor it. Um, that holds about two tonnes, two tonnes of apples, and we can vary the speed. Uh, so the apples come out gently, they drop onto the first of the shifters. So we move on in, the apples move their way up, up the conveyor belt. Once everything else is working, basically my job is just to sit here get bored and pick off any rotten apples that come through. So that's quality control. <laughs> they then drop onto the second shifter, um, which then takes them up into the water bath. We have a, a water bath on the mill. The apples drop in. They then go up the conveyor belt where they're sprayed with fresh water. And then they go into the food processor, which is on the end of the mill here. The pulp then drops down into this, I think it's, yeah, EPB 580 um, press where it goes through four rollers. It's a four roller stage. The juice comes out the bottom into the pan and the, the pumice carries on to the end where the last shifter, the short one, takes it into the trailer. So we're totally automated. No more than half an hour for total setup time. I mean, it's very, very quick. Clean down time, about three hours. But that's, that's to clean everything down, um, including the press here. But, but set up, about half an hour, because these, these are, they're very portable. Um, what I have done, on, if, if you have a look at the second shifter, is I've added a permanent trolley to it because I've got nice floors. So that makes this so easy to move around. Um, it's, it's seconds to, to, to put it in and out of situ. I certainly couldn't do it without these conveyors. I mean, they have completely transformed the way it works. This is now a one-man operation. Um, I can process a tonne, tonne and a half an hour and produce 700 litres an hour, um, basically by sitting on that chair um, and setting everything else up. Uh, obviously, as I'm sure most of you are aware, these conveyor belts are two speed. Um, depending on how quick I am with the picker on quality control, we can crank them up um, and, and, and get it even faster. But if I've got a, on a bit of a go slow, we'll, we'll have them at their slower speed. But it is good to have that two speed. Um, certainly on this, where we want to throw the pumice further into the trailer, we just pop this one up a little bit. But a very good system, very easy to wash down. That, that's the main thing. Um, very easy to clean. The belts are good to clean. We just put a hose pipe at one end and run them. Um, and then we just stow them away. Uh, they're, they're easily transportable. Uh, so yeah, it's a good system. I make 7,000 litres a year, which is uh, the amount you can make before you have to hit the duty stage with HMRC. Um, and I can do that with this setup in about two days, about two days pressing a year. Um, but yeah, a wonderful piece of kit. I swear by them. And the main thing, they're British. Uh, very, very quick setup time. These are just plug in and go. I mean, that's what's so simple about them. They're just plug and go. I, I, I do. I, I really, really love them. So, uh, yeah, easy setup. And the quicker we can get it in there, the quicker it's fermenting, 
um, the quicker I can be drinking it. <laughs> You're gonna have to cut that bit out. <laughs> Having pressed all of the apple juice, it settles in the plastic tanks at the end, 24 hours, then we pump it through, and this is where the magic happens. Come here. We pump the apple juice through to these fermenting vessels. We have seven. Stainless steel. We fill them to 1100 litres each one. And then I add the yeast, uh, the champagne yeast. We then seal them down with airlocks for about 12 weeks um, and we get a very good full fermentation. After 12 weeks we rack the cider from the dead yeast and then after another month we filter it. We filter it, um, fun enough with a machine here that's actually doing a cleaning um, mode and that filters the cider to half a micron. So we, we end up with sterile clear crystal cider where, where we then lock it down and it sits and it sits there until until we use it basically um, we then pump it across to these units here smaller tanks which are chiller tanks we take the, te the temperature down to three degrees centigrade because that's what it needs to be to take carbon dioxide we'll then add carbon dioxide and bottle it or put it in the kegs to go off to the pubs um, and that's the cycle. Uh, we, as I say, we, th this week, that's why the floor's so wet, this week is the last of what I call the primary um, uh, filtering and, and uh, conditioning of the liquid. Um, and so now it's in its finished product state, uh, ready for, for distribution. But it can stay in this state for over a year because we are temperature controlled here. So, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, this is, the, this, this, this is the more fun bit, I suppose. Um, but you've got, to do, you've got to do the basics first to get the juice in. Um, and we couldn't do it without the shifters. <laughs> so basically, uh, the proof of the pudding um, is in the drinking. Uh, this is, we're now going to tap off some of the filtered cider and you'll see what the finished product looks like. Beautifully crystal clear. He <laughs> Snorty. <laughs> That's nice. That's very, very nice. So you ask, how did it all start? Well, <clears throat> through a friend of mine um, who makes his own cider uh, and got me, got me interested again in, in making it. So as all these things, yes, I'm good at drinking it, but making it different kettle of fish. So, turn to books. I have based my entire business on this. <laughs> Making Craft Cider by Simon, I think it's McKee. Um, very, very clever man. In fact, I think he's an accountant or specialist in um, trust law, but a very easy book. Um, it's, got, it's got all the theorems in it. It's got equations in it. And really, it's all you need to start a cider business. I did phone him up and say, I've just spent a quarter of a million on a cider business. Um, I've based it on your book. Have you got it right? He did choke, um, but said, yes, he thought so. So um, the proof is in the pudding. Sales are good. Well done, Simon. Cracking book. <laughs> a bit more cheery, isn't it? It's uh, me cross-dressing. <laughs> Dickie's dribble goes down well. <laughs>